Today we are talking about Pro Tools I.O. setup and we'll get to it right after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know when I have new videos coming out. So that being said, today we are continuing along with my Pro Tools series and we are talking about IO setup. Now, IO setup is not the most exciting subject to discuss, but it is pertinent that you learn it to become good at Pro Tools or really any other DAW. And there's a good chance if you're watching this video, you might be a beginner. So in the top right corner right now, I have a playlist link popping up to my Pro Tools series. Within that series, there are several videos that will help you become more fluent in Pro Tools and just learn how to use the DAW in a much more organized and better way. So if you guys have time, check it out after this tutorial. So back to IO setup here. To access it, if we go up to the setup tab at the top here, you'll see my mouse hovering over it now. Click that. Then we wanna go down to where it says IO right here and then click that. And this is the IO window here. So it can look a little daunting uh, if you're a beginner, but I'm gonna help you get through it today. And by the time we get through it, you know what everything does. So we're gonna go through each of these six tabs at the top here, one by one, and we'll start with the input tab. All right, so for input, input is gonna show you all of the inputs that exist on your audio interface. So in this left-hand column here under name, these are all the inputs that exist on my Focusrite interface. So mic one through eight are my eight actual XLR inputs on there, but they also double up as quarter inch inputs. And then I also have SPDIF and ADAT, which I never use, but they are on this interface if I ever need to use them. So to the right over here, this is actually your routing, essentially. So mic one and two is saying, hey, this is actually input one and two analog on my focus right. It's all labeled out here for you and so forth down here, okay? So it's pretty easy to use. So if I want to, I don't know, let's say I accidentally deleted all these, that's not usually going to happen, but if I highlight them all and then I hit uh, delete path, they're gone. I'm like, okay, what do I do now? If you simply hit the default button right here, check this out. They all come right back. So the default button brings back all of your inputs that are part of your audio interface. So that's pretty cool. So if I want to add a new path in here, uh, I would just simply do new path and then I would choose how many I want to create whether I want to be mono or stereo, and then give it a name. And then if you want to add default channel assignments, you can. So we're not going to create one, but this is how you would do it. If you want to do multiple ones at one time with different names, you hit this plus button here, and you can keep adding down like that. So this is actually going to be more handy for the bus section, not so much the input section. Okay, so down here for your default format, this is how if you were creating a new... Um, input here. Do you want to be stereo or do you want to be mono? That's just like the default. Of course, you can change it as you're creating it as you just saw. And then here you have your path order and that just says, hey, you have LCR 5.1 and 7.1 on here. And that's kind of the order to go in. Most of you guys won't be using this unless you guys are doing surround sound or such. So just keep that in mind. And over here is the embedded 11 settings from, which is grayed out for me. And I believe you have to have an 11 interface for this to be enabled, but don't quote me on that. Okay, down at the bottom here, you have an option to export your settings, import your settings, or restore from your last session. So that's going to be your last Pro Tools session that you had open. So these export and import settings are not just allocated to the input tab here, but all six of these tabs, okay? You essentially can create your own IO template, which is kind of cool. So that is pretty much it for the input section. So let's move on to the output section. All right, so for output here, this is very similar to your input tab. These are all the outputs that exist on your audio interface right here in the left-hand column, just like your input tab. And then these are their assignments here, their routing. And 
you'll see this one output here, mon12, has a little speaker next to it. This means this is the output I'm using to get the audio out of my DAW, and then out of my interface, and then to my speakers. So that is actually a sign down here in the bottom right under monitor path. So you see if I change this to 3.4, it switches to 3.4 here. So let me put it back to 1.2. Pretty much all audio interfaces in Pro Tools will default to 1.2. Okay, so for audition path here, leave this on the same as monitor path. So what this does is when you are in the import tab section where you want import audio, you can actually audition and hear the audio before you import it. And in most cases, you're going to want to hear it out of the same output as your monitors because otherwise it's a good chance you're not actually going to hear it. <laughs> so just match these two up and it'll be fine. And then AFL and PFL, you don't really need to worry about this. This is for um, post and pre-monitoring listening essentially. You would need to have probably either another set of headphones, another set of studio monitors to, to you know really utilize this. So I just leave it on none because I, I don't use it. So over here this is exactly the same as input so we don't need to go over that. And then again the bottom down here this is for all six tabs across the top to create your template. So let's move on to my favorite tab now which is the bus tab. All right, so for the bus section here, you'll see my mouse is over stereo bus one and two right here. Ignore everything above it, okay? And we're gonna scroll down, and you'll see it goes down to bus 2324. So you essentially get 12 stereo buses when you create a session, and that is just not enough for me. I need a lot more than that. So that's why I said this section is very important. So if we go down to new path here, and I can create, I don't know, we'll do 24 stereo buses and then we'll do auto create sub pass and then we'll go to create and you'll see we got all these new stereo buses in here so if you want to see the sub pass just click on one of the arrows next to the buses here and you'll see like under bus 4950 we have 4950 and they are essentially just left and right channels now if you go over here it says m and that just means that these are mono channels okay so let me close that back up here and then if you go down to your default output bus here, of course we're using mon one and two under stereo. You'll see that's what I have right here. And that kind of shows you that up here at the top. So for you to get audio out of Pro Tools, technically you are routing out of a bus, okay? Even though we're saying that these are physical outputs, it's still technically looked at as a bus within Pro Tools, and that's why you see it in this section here. So just keep that in mind. It's just some knowledge for you here. And then over here, we've already talked about new path and default, and then you guys know what the bottom section does. So before we move on from the bus section here, I have a link popping up in the top right corner, which is all about session organization. And you can learn how I actually do bus routing within my sessions. So check that out after this video if you have time. So let's move on to the insert section next. All right, so the insert section here is pretty useless to you unless you have outboard gear. And the idea of this is that you could essentially route your audio out of Pro Tools to your interface to your outboard gear, whether it be maybe an outboard compressor, and then back into Pro Tools to the point where you can print that. And if you never heard the term print, that means you're actually just printing the audio with the processed effect on it, which in that case would be the outboard compressor. So if I was using, I don't know, we'll say insert three here, I would want to connect the output. This is actually the output on your audio interface here. I would want to connect this to the input on my outboard compressor. And then I want to take the output of the compressor and put it to input three on my audio interface. You're essentially creating kind of a loop. And again, that is just so you can utilize that outboard gear and then print it back into Pro Tools. So. Hope that made sense to you. If you have any questions, you know, beyond what I said there regarding outboard gear and the insert section here, leave a comment in the section below. So we're gonna move on to mic preamps. All right, so for the mic preamp section here, you'll see that I have no compliant preamps in here to work with my focus right. So some of the compliant models would be things from Avid, like the Avid Pre, 
And then you also have some outside of the Ava world, which would be like a Focusrite RedNet 4. So those would show up under the name section here. And then you would have to just tell it in Pro Tools, hey, Mike Preamp 1 is actually connected to input 1 on my Focusrite interface. Okay. So if you guys have any of these preamps, good for you. I don't. So we're going to move on from this section here and go to our last section, which is the hardware insert delay. All right, so our hardware insert delay section here actually runs in conjunction with the insert section. You'll see that we have 18 inserts here. And then if you scroll over here under the insert delay section, you'll see we have 18 also. So when you route audio outside of Pro Tools into a piece of outboard gear and then back into Pro Tools, of course, there's going to be some delay. So this is where you would have to account for it here. Now, to my knowledge, there's no way to accurately account for it. Um, it's kind of just playing around and guessing with it. There's no actual equation that uh, you can run to figure it out, <laughs> at least to my knowledge. So um, yeah, I guess you could say it's a little bit hard to use, but it is very beneficial and it is good that it does exist within Pro Tools. So that is really all there is to the hardware insert delay section. So I hope you guys learned a lot in this tutorial. I hope you guys are all experts now in the Pro Tools IO setup section. So if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I'll see you guys later and peace out.